Hi and welcome to Puzzle Pieces. In a previous video I showed you how to create a puzzle based on an anamorphic 2D image which had a text message that could only be read when you looked at it from a certain point of view. Now in this video I want to show you a similar technique but using a 3D object instead. So here I've got something I printed on my 3D printer. Uh, kind of looks like it went wrong to be honest, it kind of looks like a green splurge or maybe a banana or something. Um, and I also have this reflective chrome cylinder. Now if I hold that up close to the camera and just get that in focus for you. Now when I hold up the object and I show you its reflection in the curved surface of the cylinder, uh, hopefully you can make out that actually it's a cute little green tree frog. So how can you create one of these yourself? Okay, so I'm using uh, Blender and I've just loaded up a new scene here. So uh, the default scene comes with a cube. I'm just going to select that with right mouse button and press delete, get rid of that, and also get rid of this uh, camera here because we don't need those in the scene. So I've now got an empty scene. I'm going to go to File, Import, and you see there's lots of different types of 3D models you can import, but I'll import an STL file. Um, and here is my tree frog model which I downloaded from um, Thingiverse but you can use basically any kind of 3D model. Uh, it's obviously coming at slightly funny scale so I'll just use the middle scroll wheel and rotate around the model so that's what you can see it looks like um, pretty nice by default. So now I'm going to just expand this right hand pane here and I'm going to go to the uh, little spanner section which is the modifiers. Select add modifier and then I'm going to choose a simple deform modifier which is down here. Let me click on that. So this has different sorts of deforms you can add. This twist and bend is what we want. So I click on that. And now you can see that the, the frog is already um, deformed a bit. When I move the angle slider here you can see it's deforming. But um, by default it's deforming around the center of the model uh, which is what we want. We want it to be deformed around a cylinder in front of the frog around here. Um, so what I'm going to do is to add a new empty object to the scene and just some axes will do for this because this is an object that's not going to be um, printed or anything. This is just to use a reference point uh, to deform the frog. So I'll just move it in front of the frog about there and then I'm going to click on the frog again to select it and here in the bend modifier where it says axis origin click and select my new empty object. Now you can see the deformation of the frog has changed slightly because it's doing relative to the point here. Now when I change the angle, I'm going to go to a negative angle uh, so I can make it shrink up with a positive angle or a negative angle here will make it stretch. And the larger the uh, factor here, the more it's going to stretch around the sides of the cylinder. So I just sort of pan around. And now there's no exact science to exactly where you want to um, position the point of focus relative to the frog or the amount of things, it's something you're just going to have to play around with and just sort of look to see if you get the effect that you want to have really. Um, so you can move it left and right there to sort of reflect it differently, you can move it closer or further away. Uh, and obviously what you want to get is an object that looks deformed enough that uh, you can't easily recognize what it's meant to be um, at first glance, but when placed um, when you see its reflection in the cylinder it can be recognized. Uh, so that looks about right to me, that looks um, pretty good. I think I'll probably go with that one. So I'm just going to apply the deformation that I've uh, chosen here. That will make the um, deformation permanent. Um, or if you want you can actually go file export to a new STL file and uh, so let's just call it something different this time. Uh, let's call it tree frog, I don't know, uh, tree frog uh, anamorphic or something like that. Save that there. And that is now uh, ready to be sliced in our uh, 3D slicer program. And from this point onwards, it's basically just like any other 3D model. So uh, if you have a 3D printer, you'd load the uh, anamorphic model in your slicer. I'm using Cura here, so I'll just have a quick check around, check that the model looks okay. Um, if you don't own your own 3D printer, you can send the STL file model off uh, to various online web services that will print it out and post it back to you. Um, so I'm slicing, it's going to take me a little under three hours, and I'm just going to send that to my printer. And a couple of hours later, here we go. So uh, there's my cute little squished green frog. 
and if I place my reflective cylinder in front of it, uh, there he is, back to normal. Uh, so that's an anamorphic 3D printed object.